In this module, we're going to look at RIO addressing and typical zone wiring. We'll start off with the basic RIO. The RIO address selector has the arrow parking to 2, which automatically becomes 0, 2. To the top of the board, we have the data line A and B connections for both incoming and outgoing modules. Next to that, we have the 12 volt supply for RIOs and detectors. The terminal marked S is a spare terminal for connecting the RS485 data line screen both in and out. At the bottom of the board we have our eight programmable zone inputs. To the top left hand side of the board we have four programmable outputs that will default to bell, strobe, PA and reset. These can of course be reconfigured under menu 53 program outputs. To the middle of the board we have the RS485 communication status LED and under normal communications it is highlighted at 0.1 of a second on and 0.9 of a second off. To the bottom left hand side we have the Rio lid tamper. On a power Rio we have a 2.7 amp power supply, 8 programmable zones and 4 programmable outputs, 2 fuse 1 amp outputs, a mandatory off wall tamper switch and as it's the same enclosure as the Galaxy panel, the space for two 17 amp batteries. The hexadecimal address selector on each of the modules is normally parked at zero. As you turn the arrow, you will notice the different module addresses. Please notice the dot in the middle of each numeric number is ascending. This gives us a total of 16 valid addresses. If the arrow is turned to 6, the module address is 06. In the manual, it will list the communication devices. At the top, you have the panel variants, and down the left hand column, all of the different peripherals. This diagram will indicate how many modules you can have per data line. Under the actual addressing, it will give you the valid addresses per module, per data line, for the different panel variants. Please note, you can only ever have three Keyprox keypads on data line 1 of the dimension panel. Also, you cannot set a Keyprox address the same as a MAX3 address on the data line. When we program a zone under menu 52, one of the options is to set the resistance bands that the Galaxy looks for. The default monitored zone conditions are on the left hand side and the option that's at default for the Galaxy is on the far right hand side. These are two typical wiring diagrams. The top diagram indicates a detector that doesn't have a separate alarm, tamper, fault and mask relay, whereas the drawing on the bottom has the additional anti-mask relay. If wiring multiple doors on a single zone, we need to change the option to option 01 from the default option 09, which is the system. This is because if more than two doors was open, you would indicate first fault, and then obviously as more doors was open, you'd be in a mass condition. So reprogram the zone input to be 01. This is a typical schematic of a Honeywell grade 3 anti-masking detector that doesn't have a separate mask relay. Under normal circumstances we read the 1K in the line which is closed. In an alarm condition we read 2K. In a fault condition we'll read 3K plus the 1K which is 4K. And in a mask condition we'll open both the alarm and the trouble relay so we read 5K. If the detector, like a Honeywell DT900 series, has the separate mask, trouble, tamper and alarm outputs, then 1K is a closed. In an alarm condition we read 2K. In a fault condition we read 4K. And in a mask condition we read 13K. When we look at individual zone addresses, the first digit will always be referenced to the data line connected to the panel. The next two digits will be the module address, in this case it's 5 so it becomes 05. The final digit 
will be a zone number between 1 and 8, or alternatively if it's an output it will be between 1 and 4.